Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Rev. Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Good evening. Praise God. We are into our second week into this important lesson entitled, Your Safety is in Your Sanctification. So we're talking about, we're answering an important question, how do you become safe in an unsafe world? How are we secure? Where is our security? Where is our strength? This lesson is gonna help somebody. This is lesson two. So I need you to open your Bibles to the Gospel of John chapter eight. The Gospel according to John chapter 8, which will give us our scripture text to take off into this important lesson. God wants you to find this safe place in him. Uh, somebody here tonight, no matter what's going on in the world, I want to assure you there is a safe place in God. All right. Start reading at verse 3. The Gospel of John. Grab your Bibles, grab your devices, whatever you have, and uh, just follow along. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that we should be that such a person should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down a posture of humility. He stooped down. Man, that's good teaching right there. If we can maintain a quietness and a humility, good things will happen, even in the midst of a situation like this where Jesus knew they were trying to accuse him. So I just felt led by the Holy Spirit to tell somebody, take a deep breath, maintain your humility, maintain your calmness, maintain your quietness, and you will find yourself able to stand through any kind of crisis or critical situation. So Jesus gave us a, a good word here. It says he stooped down, didn't say a word, and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, and saw that none was there but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. We are talking about, and that, that scripture verse is going to come right into a specific point at this lesson. But we were talking about the Bible study answering a, a specific question for us today. How do you stay safe? How do I maintain my peace? How do I maintain a place of safety? in the middle of all that's going on in the world? How do I make sure that I don't allow myself to get you know, uh, frustrated or lose hope in my faith? So we found out that there are a lot of things going on in the world um, that makes this place unsafe. And I just wanna, just a couple, because I wanna get into the word, but think about healthcare issues, diseases and vaccines, right? Uh, and viruses. The viruses are transmutating. Uh, we find out that they just had to stop the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Not saying anything's wrong for anyone who got it, but it's, it's part of science. It's part of people trying to figure it out. And the healthcare system has inherently within it uh, systemic racism and, and you know healthcare issues when it comes to minorities. 
Then we want to talk about the vitriol. Vitriol just means this, this hatred and anger in our politics now. Our politics have never, ever been so crazy as they are now. Think about it. It's just hatred and anger. I mean, the Capitol riot was based on such a blatant division, and that's where we are in the world. Uh, tax on marriage with sexual identity. Um, this is another whole lesson that I would love to get into because I think the church's response to sexual identity at best has been wrong. Uh, I think what we need to understand is how to maintain the love of God, not the judgment, hatred, and putting down of people, but understand how to deal with the issue and make sure that we don't ignore the person. I don't have time to get into that, but the attacks on marriage and uh, the institution and systemic racism, come on, we have the latest um, um, in Minnesota, young young man who was shot with um, by accident. The police officer was supposed to have a, a taser, Dante, and they actually shot him. I don't know how that happens, but here's the here's the real deal. We're tired because it's just another name of an unarmed black person somebody's son getting shot, whatever the reason, it's tiring and it's just adding to the unsafeness in our country. Uh, education, the pandemic, our colleges are failing. Violence, guns, unarmed killings, mass shootings, all of these things. But well, what is the answer? The answer to your safety. This is what we've been talking about. The answer to your safety is going higher in God. You have to make sure that you know, I gotta get closer to God in order to, you're never gonna be safe away from God. This sounds so simplistic, but Christians don't understand. It's not this every now and then read the word. It's not this, uh, this is who I am, I have arrived. It's every day trying to get higher, trying to go closer. You gotta get higher in God. And we've been taking off saying that our safety is in your ultimate safety, health issues, whatever's going on in your life, if you continue to be sanctified, and we're gonna deal with the doctrine of sanctification, the doctrine of justification, the doctrine of glorification, but I'm talking to you. Have you set yourself apart for the use of God? Until you are sold out to sanctification, even though you have a Bible with all the scriptures and all the word, they won't do any good until we find ourselves in a place that we're continually saying, I need to take another step closer to God. I need to get closer to God. I'm telling somebody, your answer tonight is a plan that says, I am closer to God today than I was five years ago, two years ago, one year ago. You gotta make sure that you understand my safety is in getting sanctified. Now, sanctification and holiness are, are the same words, synonymously, they can be used interchangeably, but all it means is holiness is I have been separated. I'm in the world, but not of the world. I'm in the world, but I don't let the world dictate how I use my life. And so we found out that 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 is our scripture. Now the spirit, now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I shared with you that word freedom is the word liberty. And liberty even goes greater than freedom because it means an extended, uh, uh, possessed freedom. I'm at liberty. I, I know now that because of the Spirit of God, there is freedom. Now watch this. And we with unveiled faces beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed. There's that word. Transformed into the same in image from the degree of glory to another degree of glory. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Follow that teaching. So if I was healed in the past, if you've been delivered in the past, okay, if you're still here right now, you're here because there was a word that came into you, took you from one state of glory. All glory is, it tells us in this text, is by us looking at God and getting closer to God, the reflection of God's goodness, because God is the one who is glorified, it comes on us and that glory in us allows us to be transformed. What's transformed? 
my old nature is not, uh, my old nature will always be with me. But what God is transforming is my spirit my mind and my direction. He's sanctifying me. He, he's giving me the courage to put down the old man. So when I get sanctified, somebody said, well, I don't want to do the stuff I used to do. I don't want to. No, you're never going to be in a position where you don't have to cast down thoughts. When you lay down at night, a spirit's going to come and it's going to come and try to steal your mind, steal your joy, steal your peace. And I don't care how saved you are. You could have just left a Bible study. You could have just came from anywhere. Don't think the devil's going to take a day off. You're never going to arrive to a place of sanctification totally. And we're going to talk about it until you learn first that I got to change from glory to glory. So the battle you fought yesterday might be a battle you have to put down and fight today. That's all we're telling you. And I love this. Transform. God is transforming us into the image of his son. Because it says that we will be transformed into the same image as God. I love the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 12, when it says, uh, uh, The same works that I do, you can do, and greater works will you do. All God is saying is, as you get close to him and his spirit flows through us, this text is very clear. The spirit of the Lord is who sets us free, not our spirit. Our spirit gets ignited with his glory and then we get set free. That's the blessing of going higher. Higher means if I could not, I'm going to put it in, in words you can understand. If I could chase away two or three demonic forces that were after my children, that was after my mind, that was after my job, that was, and now I get closer and I get more glory, I'm able to cast down. Some things I don't have to think about. It's like the Spirit of God comes in, and there's some things, and you check yourself. There's some times when some things that used to worry you don't worry you anymore because of the word that's already in you. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to remember, we're going from glory to glory. Somebody say, glory to glory to glory. That's what God's expectation is for us. But then we have to remember that this all comes from understanding sanctification. Look at Mark 8. Uh, write this down, 34 to 45. 35 says, Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, stop, come after me. God said, you can't be my true disciple if you're not chasing me. Think about that terminology. When I was in the world, I was chasing money. I was chasing my career. I was chasing women. I was chasing men. Come on, y'all, think about it. We were chasing whatever, the latest style. God said, you have to understand, chasing after me is having this great desire to every day want to be closer to me. If you chase after God, everything else will disappear. Look what he said. Come after me. Let him deny himself. Take up your cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Powerful word. Let that meditate in your heart. While you're going through changes, anxiety, stress, pressure, a new illness popped up, a new money problem popped up. Uh, maybe you sat back and looked at your life and said, where am I? What's going on? Here's what God said. Keep chasing me. <clears throat> Deny the thing that you want. Follow me and you'll be changed. Because you'll, you'll stop trying to save your life and you'll, you'll actually gain life because you lost your life to me. If I hide my life in God, then I am saved. So there are two premise scriptures. One is, no, you can't stay where you are. Keep it moving. God expects you to go high. Quit telling me what you used to do. Some of us got these great big stories about what, how saved I, remember, remember when, remember? No, that won't save you today. And then he said, understand that I got to always remember the discipleship is I'm chasing God. I'm going after him. I'm denying myself and I'm being changed into, I'm, I'm going to follow him and be changed into what he wants me to be changed into. So that brings me to three doctrines that are all through the New Testament, especially in the gospel and the letters to Romans and Ephesians. Well, it's all throughout. But you need to understand God placed these doctrines in Scripture so that you and I would understand 
where our power comes from. Hmm. That's something to think about. You, you tuned into this Bible study, or you turn into another Bible study, you tune into your favorite preacher, whoever it is, and you're trying to get power. I want power. The power does not come from the people. The power comes from you grabbing the word and going closer in God. So we need to understand that these doctrines God set up are legal doctrines that give us legal rights to more power. So real power came from God. So the sanctification gap represents the gaps between these areas. Watch the areas. Justification, the process of sanctification, and glorification. Understand those words. Justification comes first. Then there is sanctification. And then ultimately, there is a glory reflected in me. That is so good. Once I'm justified by God's grace and mercy, then I, sancti I, I get sanctified. And we're going to find there's three levels of sanctification. And then there is glorification, or meaning I reflect his glory. Those are the days I'm walking around, you know, I am so strong, this thing that used to hold me can't hold me anymore. I got to move on. So we need to understand living in the gospel, right? Uh, in, in our lifetime, this comes through justification, sanctification, glorification. Understand that. Say what we mean. Justification, sanctification, glorification. It's a, it's a process. Justification, God did. Sanctification, God did what I have to do. Glorification comes from God when I ignite myself with him. Right? Justification, sanctification, glorification. And in this process, justification, the doctrine, I want you to write this down, is the process whereby God declares a person to be righteous on the basis of his faith in the person, of your faith in God and his work. You and I know, if we're going to be honest, we are still a mess. Can I get a hand? How many of us know we surprise ourselves sometimes <laughs> with the evil that we can still do? With some of the longings in our flesh. Am I getting too deep for somebody? With some of the ways that we stray. We find ourselves in a position sometimes where we look and say, wow, but here is the great news from the Bible. Justification. God knew we couldn't do on our own. He tried it through the law through bulls, through goats, through doves. He tried it through the prophets. He tried it through the kings and the leaders. He tried everything, nothing worked, until Jesus Christ said, Father, we love them. I love them. You know, Jesus is God. God the Father, God the Son, God only said, look, we love them enough that we know none of this stuff works. So what we need to do is make sure that they find their way back to us. Isn't it something? We ran from God. He decided to die so we could get back to him. So it's the process where God says you're justified. All that stuff I was talking about doing, uh, I'm not by myself, all the things we've done since we've been saved. Can I tell you good news? You're completely justified. God said justification is not a process that he just put, he said, I'm not leaving it to a temporary it's based on some things that have nothing to do with us as much as it has to do with the Spirit of God. Matter of fact, I want you to know that God's, God is the one who justifies. Write down Romans 3, 21 to 26. Let me read it. Romans 3, 21 to 26. For we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We know that text, but look at the next verse and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came through Jesus Christ. No one can ever call you guilty again. It, it's something that came with your confession. It's part of who you are. The devil can try to lie on you all at once, but you are completely justified in Christ. Now, just because we're justified don't mean we can act any kind of way. But that's why God put the next process in of sanctification. But we're justified. Let's figure out what I mean by justified. 
Um, we were on our way down south some years ago. And I remember we were sitting in a restaurant and with every breakfast meal came hush puppies. Y'all know what hush puppies are? Those little, and they are, I love them, little cornballs, hush puppies, right? So we're sitting there in the restaurant. This one man said, look, he got them on his plate. He said, I didn't order these, call the waitress over, and I'm not paying for these. She said, look, sir, you don't order them, you don't pay for them, you just get them. It's part of the package. Wow, that's what Jesus said. He said, that's why the devil really has no right in your life anymore because you didn't pay for salvation, Jesus did. You didn't order salvation, you was running in our own direction, but you just get it. You are justified. It's like being born into the family, in our family, by rights. Once you're born in my family, I gotta take care of you because you're my child. If not, it's called child abuse. God does not abuse us, he said. You are justified, totally. Let me give you the three things that justify you. One is God's grace, right? Romans 5, 15. Romans 5, 15. It says, Romans 5, 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more by the grace of God, the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abound to many. Somebody say grace. I sleep good at night because of God's grace. His grace covers my shortcomings. His grace covers the area I can't cover. It's a free gift. God's grace is all wrapped up in his love. Tonight, you know why the devil can't touch you? Because God's put a grace barrier around your house. Man, you would have been gone. You would have gone under a long time ago. Many of us know we are shocked ourselves when we stand and we're still okay after all this stuff that happened in our life. And we look around, other folk went through the same thing. Can I, nobody know what I'm talking about? They went through the same struggle. Why are you still here? Why didn't you go crazy when you went through that? Why didn't you fall apart? Because God covered you with his grace. Somebody ought to say, thank God for his grace. Romans 5.15. And next, what makes justification so sure? It's legal. It's forensic. It's, forensic. It's, it's, it's something that's owed me. Something that can't be denied as a child of God. Is Jesus' blood. Romans 5.9. I told you Roman is the Magna Carta of this stuff, right? Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Much more. I told you what much more means. Prophets couldn't do it. Bulls couldn't do it. Blood couldn't do it. You now are a brand new creation because the blood still works. Then 2 Corinthians 5, 21, the components of justification, God's grace, God's blood, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Here's what it says, and I love this. God allowed Jesus to die on the cross that we would be made sanctified in him. So justification is activity of God, which liberates a person from the guilt of sin. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. Do you hear all that stuff? God's word astounds me sometimes. I'm justified by the Spirit of God, by the Lord Jesus Christ. John 8, 10, 11. This is our text. Let's look at our text for a minute. So, this woman, the scribes and the Pharisees, saw that they caught this woman in the act of adultery. Now, the law of Moses says that they should be stoned. But by this century, you'll notice when they gave Jesus said, what do you say? And the law was a little relaxed because they should have stoned her. But what they did they brought her to Jesus in a public place, dragging her through the streets so they could catch her, they catch Jesus, and humiliate her. They wanted to catch Jesus in an area where he was saying, you got to do this. you you got to say this is wrong. It reminds me of, uh, and I'm getting back to this again, how sometimes 
we will see a person who is uh, who's doing something obvious. They're uh, they've been prostituting. They've been doing drugs, or or maybe they uh, are homosexual. And it seems to me that we do almost what they did with this lady. Instead of remembering that our job is to bring people from Christ, we get into this judgment thing. It's like that Pharisee comes up in us where our first thing to do when they come to us is start quoting scriptures. And God said this and God said that. And the person is saying, I really was just looking at what that person needs at that moment is a little love. You ever been in a situation where, you know, you know you're wrong, but if somebody could just have a little compassion on you. As a matter of fact, I know you've been in that situation because that's what God does to us all the time. He knows we're wrong, but he has compassion on us anyway. It's like many of us get this hardened attitude. I heard one preacher say, a lot of us are like the prodigal son's brother who stayed home. You know, we get into this religious mode. I mean, you looking at me now? Yeah, I'm saved. You know, I'm anointed. I'm, I got my anointment. I, and we get to the point where we're just no good for God because we, we tear everybody down. These Pharisees and scribes thought they were doing right. Here is a person who will never get saved. Prostitute, drug addicted, homosexual will never get saved by you when all you have is harsh criticism for them. But you never remember that Jesus would have first loved them. How do I know? It's right here. He would have loved them first. But sometimes y'all start to say, uh, how's your day? What's going on in your life? Can I help you dry the tears? No, no, we get this attitude. Can you see him dragging her through the road and pulling her by her hair and saying, let's take her to Jesus. We can get Jesus and her. You know, they love to, to, to catch him. So it says she was caught in the very act. The word caught there is in the perfect tense, which means they saw her. I don't have time to get into the law, but the law actually says there ought to be a witness there that saw what was happening. So automatically we all know the man should have been there too. Why did they just take the woman? Because when we get into these acts of humiliation, all we think about doing at this point, all they were thinking about doing was exposing Jesus, but also humiliating this woman. And then we find out when they got to Jesus, they said, the law of Moses says, she ought to be stoned. Cases like this. What do you say? They said, what do you say, Jesus? Oh, I'm glad there's a what do you say, Jesus? Because I've been, the reason I chose this for justification is because I've been where this woman is and you have too. And the world was saying, guilty. But Jesus was saying, I love you. The world was saying, too much sin. Jesus was saying, I'll wash you. The world was saying, throw away. And Jesus saying, I'll make them a new creation. Look what they said. What do you say? And I love what Jesus did. Immediately. He stooped down. Position of humility. And there's all kind of things about what he wrote, right? Everybody says, you know, uh, first he was stalling for time. Uh, he was writing the law down. Uh, the word used there, uh, the word for writing is the word uh, in, the, in the Greek of graphene. But he used the word katagraphene, which meant, uh, which meant showing or something that's pointing to something. It's a pointed writing, right? So Jesus was saying that, no, uh, some people said that he was writing their sins. But I believe because of the language there that he was actually writing what he spoke, what he knew was in their heart. Stop, please, remember. God knows what's in your heart. He was writing what's... And that's what justification is so cool because God knows what's in my heart when he just, he loved me and justifies me anyway. So he said, the rocks fell from the oldest to the youngest. I can preach on that. The oldest to the youngest. Sometimes young folk don't know what they don't know. But old folks said, woo, they got us. And threw the rocks down. Then the young folk threw the rocks down, right? And when they threw the rocks down, the Bible said Jesus was still down there. I love Jesus. He never looked up. Which is another sign. Don't take part in humiliating someone else. Don't, don't ever take someone's dignity. Please be aware of Galatians that says you're going to reap what you sow. I tell you, if you ever get on a high horse to want to humiliate somebody else, then you're going to find yourself in that same position one day. So Jesus stood up. The Bible says, and he lifted himself up and he saw just a woman there and he said, where are thine accusers? That's our text right there. This is the part that shows justification. Jesus said, where are you? Does no one condemn you? No one, sir. Then he said, neither do I. Now watch this. Here's where he sends us to sanctification. 
all right? With ending justification, he said, I don't condemn you. That's good news right there. But now we got to go to sanctification. He says, go now and leave your life of sin. Thanks, Jesus. The Bible tells us that's justification. It's going on to sanctification. Now look at what sanctification is. It's an activity of God which liberates a Christian from the power of sin. See, Jesus justified us from sin. Now we can't let sin's power ruin our life. So now we have to be justified from the power of sin. It says justification imputes the righteousness of God to man. So sanctification imparts the righteousness of God through man. There are three access aspects for you to understand. There's positional sanctification. It is the state of holiness imputed to the Christian at the moment of his conversion to Christ. It denotes not so much one's spiritual condition as your position. So here's what God says. When I look at you, you're in a position that you're sanctified. That's positional sanctification. It's that, okay, so uh, I, I said again, I have four children. Every one of my four children can walk, knock on the door, walk into their house, our house, and it still be their house because they're my family. They can walk up to me and ask me for stuff. Uh, they can go into the refrigerator and eat something. I might holler at them if they eat too much. But what I'm saying is the position there, and now a stranger couldn't do that. A stranger has to be treated differently. But once you're in God's family, you're in the position of sanctification. So here's what I want you to know about positional sanctification. Once you're there, the devil has to recognize your position. People have to recognize that's Reverend Duncan's child. 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. To the church of God that is at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Here's the 1 Corinthians 1 and 2 tells us the Corinthian church was a mess, but they were positionally sanctified because of who they were in God. You understand that positional sanctification says that I'm okay because of who I am in God, right? Progressive sanctification. Now it's coming down to us. This is getting good. Somebody said, how do I get out of this mess I'm in? Your safety is in your sanctification. It refers to the process in our daily lives by which we are being conformed to the image of Christ. It means that when I know that I want to be progressively sanctification, it's the word we just said. I'm seeking God for the answer. Here's the scripture. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ. The enemy could not mess with you if you didn't let silly thoughts run through your mind. The enemy could not mess with you if you didn't find yourself always in a position where you were trying to live in the world and live in the church. The enemy couldn't mess with you if you were Constantly, your position, now I'm progressing. I'm getting better. I'm going higher in the Lord. And the last one, we're going to close with this tonight. We're going to pick this lesson back up. It'll, it'll bless you. Ultimate sanctification is the state of holiness that we will attain to in this life when we realize we are finally in the presence of God. 1 John 3 and 2. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But what we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. What are you dealing with tonight? What are you dealing with? Any, whenever, you, whenever you're listening to this message, what are you dealing with? The answer is not, grab me a scripture. No, you got to grab some more God. The answer is not, I knew that word and, and by his stripes I'm healed. And the enemy is still eating you up with sickness because it's not that. You're detached. You're trying to use a scripture in the place of a relationship when God said, no, chase after me. Get closer to me. Sometimes it doesn't even take you going to a new scripture. It's sitting somewhere by yourself, reminiscing about that and rekindling that relationship because your safety, your deliverance, your next level, your next blessing is in your sanctification. I'm chasing after God. This is Pastor Duncan say, now, don't forget, next week we're going to pick this lesson up here, and you're going to see the understanding of sanctification and glorification and understand no matter what's going on in this world, I am saved. Please look on the screen, and, and if you want to give to this ministry, there's several ways to give to the ministry. Go to our website and find out. 
send something in the chat. Let us know you're listening to this message. But remember, say this with me. My safety is in my sanctification in God. God bless you.